Yo, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Coca Carl. For all me today to talk about uh, the new series that I'm doing called uh, Prehistoric uh, Subject Files, which is basically I just go over a, a particular uh, genus of animal, uh, prehistoric animal, and I talk about it pretty much. Um, so today we're going to start off with the mascot of this new series, Stegosaurus. Now, this genus of spe Stegosaurus uh, lived during the late Jurassic period, uh, 155 to 150 million years ago. Now. It comprises of three species currently used to be four, but now it's three. There is uh, the type species, and the most well-known species, it's known as Stegosaurus stenops, which means narrow-faced roof lizard. Uh, uh, the holotype was collected in Colorado in 1886. There's a famous specimen known as roadkill, which was a specimen found uh, comprising of many different parts of the uh, animal. Uh, the plates, the tail vertebrae, uh, some limb bones, and uh, I believe some rib and neck bones as well, and maybe bits of the skull. Um, now, Stegosaurus stenops may have been the most common species of Stegosaurus. Uh, it was around 7 metres long, probably weighed in around 4.5 tonnes, maybe. And, uh, yeah, it's just been found in different places. The second species known was Stegosaurus ulmgartus, and that was also found by Charles Marsh, who founded the Stegosaurus gen uh, genus, and uh, he founded Armatus first, but Armatus is now considered a dubious species. Now... Lungartus was first discovered in 1879 at Como Bluff. The holotype is notable for having the hoofed claws, and that's where it gets Lungartus from. Stegosaurus Lungartus means hoofed roof lizard. Um, and basically, the main differences between this and Stenops is that, well, Lungartus seems to be in fewer numbers, and it also has uh, a longer set of hind limbs, proportionally smaller, pointier plates with wider bases, and was once thought to have eight thagomizers, but it doesn't now. And also, additionally, um, it appears that Lungartus may have actually also lived in Portugal as well, because at the time of Stegosaurus, uh, Europe and America were joined, and maybe from some 2006 specimens uh, that were found in Portugal, maybe this Stegosaurus had the biggest range. The third and final currently uh, accepted species is Stegosaurus sulcatus, which means thorough roofed lizard, and that was discovered in the same year as Stegosaurus stenops. Now, what's unusual about this species is that it has unusually thoroughed plates, and that's where it gets the thorough part from. Also, this species might be distinct enough from other species because it has a shoulder spike or has been presumed to have a shoulder spike. Now, uh, obviously, this species is a bit more fragmentary than the other two, uh, but a shoulder spike, in my opinion, would rank it as probably being maybe a different genus, but it depends. We have to find more uh, skeletal remains of this. And a little fun fact about all three species, um, there was a 2013 study that was said to group all three species uh, of Stegosaurus together and also name uh, another dinosaur called um, uh, Esprosaurus as a species of Stegosaurus. So Olungiatus sulcatus would be synonymized with uh, Stenops and then there would be a second and I think possibly a third species as well uh, named as well. Now, what distinguishes Stegosaurus from other Stegosaurinae is the fact that its brain is actually proportionally very small compared to the rest of its body. Its brain has actually been weighed in at around 80 grams, but this is based on a uh, specimen of Stegosaurus stenops, which uh, is the most common Stegosaurus species, as said. Um, Stegosaurus was a low browser, and the at... Um, the anatomical features that allow it to be descri uh, described or distinguished from other stegosaurids is because it has 27 vertebral columnary ant uh, anterior uh, to sacramal bones. So basically it has 17 dorsal uh, vertebrae and 10 neck vertebrae and that's between uh, the base of the skull and the hip area. And it also has 46 vertebrae in the tail. It also has a robust scapula, so that would be the shoulder bone. And the hind feet have three claws, while the two inner feet on the front paws have claws. It's also been distinguished by the fact that it has 17 to 22 plates, with the largest being 60 centimetres, or two feet in height. But this can vary from species to species. And uh, also with the giant thagomizers on the uh, tail, which can be up to around somewhere to 60 to 90 centimetres. Now, Stegosaurus was found to live in drier climates and was also found to feed on cycads, 
horsetails, ferns, conifers, fruits and mosses. Now the reason is, is because a 2016 study actually found that a previous 2010 study was actually wrong about the bite strength of Stegosaurus. Because previously Stegosaurus was thought to only be able to bite through anything that was less than 12 millimeters in diameter. However, new bi biomechanical studies have actually shown that this is wrong and that Stegosaurus had a much tougher bite than we previously thought. Tracks of Stegosaurus have been found in places like Dinosaur Ridge in Dakota, and what this tells us is that Stegosaurus actually moved in herds of many individuals and of many ages, so this shows that Stegosaurus was a grouping animal, probably not living in massive groups, but maybe small groups, and actually caring for their young, as we see with the tracks. Now, this could also implicate that Stegosaurus may have migrated with each other to protect the young, and may have also looked after the young until they were old enough to fend for themselves. The function of the plates on the Stegosaurus is quite debatable. There was uh, several different theories roaming around in the years. Uh, the most probable theory is that they were for sexual display, but uh, this theory might be at risk due to the um, new evidence that's saying that Stegosaurus might not have been able to hold up the plates like it does in some restorations. Now, however, there's other theories such as thermoregulation, sexual display, uh, territorial display, uh, fending off predators. There was even one uh, theory made by Robert Barker, which he said was basically that the horns were actually uh, well the horn the cause these were the cause of gigantic spikes slash horns that sat on the back of the stegosaurus and the stegosaurus would actually manipulate to fend off predators and maybe attack rivals now stegosaurus was actually a slow moving animal moving up to six to seven kilometers per hour and it may have also originated in europe due to um certain tracks found in France that have been dated to around 195 million years ago and there are certain Stegosaurus species that may have uh, existed around that time not in the Stegosaurus genus but from a different genus now this concludes that maybe all Stegosaurs may have originated from Europe and specifically may have even originated from the Oxford clay formation which is in Britain and may have come from uh, species like Lex of Lexavosaurus, which is a stegosaurid, an early stegosaurid, and may have migrated to North America because Europe and North America at the time were, were connected and may have evolved into stegosaurus. Now, stegosaurus have been featured in many uh, pop culture uh, media in the many years that it's been known. Um, I believe it has also been featured, apart from Planet Dinosaur and Walking with Dinosaurs, obviously, it's also been featured in the 1993 adaptation of King Kong, and has also been featured in the November 1884 issue of Scientific America, where it's um, shown with the uh, two brains uh, hypothesis, which is incorrect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little um, this little thing that I'm doing here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Prehistoric Subject Files. Uh, hopefully I'll be up with another one sometime in the future. I don't know when. Uh, these could appear uh, regularly or sporadically or whenever I choose just to do one. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I shall see you later. Bye bye.